Hey there, this video I will try my very best to explain the concept of UL standards. Let's see if I succeed. Begin by, um, I will begin by explaining what UL standards are. Examples, products covered by UL standards. If UL standards are mandatory, that's a very big um, question for many. Amazon's relation to UL standards and how you can get access to UL standards. But let's begin with the very basics. What are UL standards? Sorry. So UL standards are at the core technical and safety standards or um, technical documents developed by underwrite uh, laboratories. And they have been around for a long time, I think more than 100 years now. Could be wrong, but I, I think it's something in that, something around that. Essentially, a UL standard is a specification that concerns safety, performance, test methods, verification, that in turn applies to, generally speaking at least, a, a very specific product type or component. What this means is that there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of UL standards that each apply to such as this example, UL 2054 household and commercial batteries, UL 1694 standard for test for flammability of small polymetric component materials. So that we got one for materials. Now we got one for components up here. Okay. And finally, UL 115 sustainability and that's that's something we'll likely see grow in the future become more important for ul but anyway sustainability for thermal insulation so ul standards can be applied to a very diverse range of products components and materials and that's also the value so which products are covered by ul standards well UL standards are mainly at least associated with electronic and electrical equipment, consumer electronics and so on, but can also apply to materials and other consumer products. But mostly, and that's also what I will focus on in this video, is to discuss UL standards within the context of uh, electronics. So now to the big question. Are UL standards mandatory? This is um, something that can be very confusing. I think I will be able to clarify this. Uh, do my best anyway. UL standards are, generally speaking, voluntary. That being said, all products must be safe. And UL standards can find a way to achieve this. So what do I mean by that? Now, let's say I'm selling, I'm selling a product in the US. I'm selling, say, let me come up with something. I'm, I'm selling something with a lithium battery inside. And we, we know that lithium batteries are dangerous. Battery fires, very scary things. You don't want to, you don't, you don't want to encounter one of those. And, and you don't want your consumers to face a situation where your product, boom, blows up. This is very, very dangerous. Now, Practically, you can go online and you can buy a whole shipment of, say, lithium battery devices like these hoverboards if you go back to like 2015, right? Just, just go and buy them online, have them shipped over from, from, from here, from Asia, and start selling in the U.S. Again, UL standards are, generally speaking, voluntary. Why care? Well, it's the little problem here is that as an import, as a manufacturer, you're, you're, you're liable. Okay, so when these hoverboards that you imported, when they start blowing up, you got a big problem, a very big problem. So what I'm getting to here is that, okay, maybe voluntary, but it's in your interest. Okay, the camera says it's your interest to ensure that your product is as safe as it can be. That's where UL standards come in. That's why UL standards are extremely important. If I, was, I wouldn't sell anything with a current or a battery with our full US, sorry, full UL compliance in the US. I tell you that much. I got a lot of experience with this stuff. I've seen a lot of this stuff blow up. Uh, chargers, battery devices, and so on. I worked 10 years in manufacturing. I know the risks, especially when it comes to electronics. There's no such thing as accidental compliance, okay? You need to verify. And UL standards provide that roadmap, that building block to ensure compliance. 
This is also reflected by the way that Amazon looks at it. And as I mentioned, I mentioned these hoverboards, right? But this was back in, in uh, I think it was December 2015. So it's been a while now, but it was this hit the news uh, before, yeah, uh, Christmas uh, Christmas season in, in, in 2015 that you had these hoverboards from, uh, well, mainly from Shenzhen, um, starting to explode, just going boom all over the world, killing people absolutely horrendous so amazon they 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 just pull them they just wipe them out and say okay if you want to keep selling you have to submit ul test reports and i can't remember which one it was it was like ul 16 something i think it applies to lithium batteries and i think 90 percent of them or something they they didn't get back they didn't get reinstated they didn't get released because they didn't have this because well you know it's just a voluntary standard so who cares anyway but amazon cares they really care about ul compliance and you can find now in the ul seller central that they have this product list different product types i think it's only electronics but i could be wrong and and where they clarify that you want to sell this on amazon in the us you have to comply with this or that ul standard so they have made it mandatory but then it's I've also heard, this is something I've heard from our customers. It's not like I, I, I know this first time, but what, what I heard, and it's com perfectly reasonable, is that product liability insurance companies in the US, they also want to see UL compliance because they don't want to they don't want to um, offer insurance if you can't prove um, that your product is safe. Okay. And another, another scenario would be retailers, even consumers. But then again, you know, it's, it's really in your self-interest. You know, it's like Amazon or no Amazon or voluntary, no voluntary. It doesn't really matter in that because you don't want to be liable if, if, if a lithium battery blows up, you know, if it, if it, if it takes down a house, it's, and these things happen. So it uh, doesn't really matter in that, right? Uh, you want to make sure it's safe. Right. And just a final note, and that's that Amazon can request a UL test report at any time. We have... Uh, sometimes receive comments or angry emails saying, why do you say this uh, BS? We have been selling on Amazon. We don't have any safety test reports. We don't have any UL test reports. We've been selling for years. It's clearly they don't care. Well, the thing is that they, they, don't, they can't monitor all products uh, simultaneously. So just because you've been successfully selling a product uh, on Amazon without any compliance checks, doesn't mean that they will check it at some point. So, what if you're in a situation where you have determined that, well, you came to the realization after watching this video that, oh, I, I, I really shouldn't ignore this stuff because this is really serious and I really want my products to be as safe as they can be. Well, if you came to, if you come to that realization, maybe even before watching this video, then what's the next step? Well, you need to determine which UL standards apply and, and you can go and you can do a search on the UL website and then you need to buy these standards. These are not free. They can cost uh, anything from 200 to 1500 US, maybe even more sometimes. Yeah. So you go to ul.com and then you click on, yeah, they have a, they have a sub domain or they have a different domain for the, the standards. I can't remember exactly, but go to ul.com and you'll find it. And I said, the prices can vary from a few hundred uh, USD and, and up. Standards can be purchased both, both as a PDF or hard copy. And whether you need a, well, the two scenarios I would say when you really need to have a UL standard, when you need to have a copy of the UL standard. And that is if you are at a drawing board and you're developing, say, a new electronic product, and you need to ensure that, you know, everything from, you know, wiring diagram, PCB schematics, bill of materials, it's, it's all compliant, it's all safe. Then you would need to buy the standard at, at, at a stage when you're developing the product. Well, your engineers would need it. Or I guess another scenario would be that you are looking at an ODM, uh, ODM product or maybe a modular system or something like that, and you want to compare it to a UL standard before you go ahead and you do testing. Which leads me to the next slide, and that's that of UL testing. So UL testing is, well, it's a procedure that we use, well, that, that is applied to verify that the product is compliant, okay? with the UL standard in question. This goes hand in hand. And in practice, unless you have your own equipment and procedures, 
you would need to to arrange third party testing. Now, UL Solutions, which that's what they call themselves these days, they do offer testing services. So they are not just developing standards, but they, they're also one of the biggest testing companies. And they, yeah, for the record, they don't just do testing for the United States or even with UL standards, they do testing for the EU and so on. I met them here in Hong Kong. Um, so it, yeah, they're really, well, one of the most, uh, sophisticated compliance companies, if not the most sophisticated compliance company in, in the world. Anyway, you aren't limited to UL standard, well, to UL itself. Um, it's not like you absolutely have to go to UL solutions. There are other companies offering testing according to UL standards. Now, one little thing to consider is that at the very least, that lab should then be ISO certified. That's also something that Amazon uh, requires, you can see that in, in Amazon Cell Essential that they don't explicitly mention, or at least they they didn't uh, up, up until very recently, I mean, could have changed today for all I know, but they don't mention that you need UL to test according to UL standards. What, what, what they wrote in the Cell Essential is something different that you need to comp your product must be tested according to these standards and it, the lab must be ISO certified. I can't remember this ISO 17025 or something like that, but the lab has to be ISO certified or it's not valid. Okay. So that's just one last thing to consider when it comes to UL standards. Okay. I hope you learned a thing or two. I did my best to clarify UL standards in practice why they exist, why you can't ignore them, even if, 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 if they aren't necessarily mandatory. But I understand if you still have questions and if you do have questions, you can write a comment on YouTube or on compliancegate.com.